Thank you. Um, given that time is limited and we each only have five minutes, I do share the Minister's concerns in relation to ISIS and, and indeed the situation in the Ukraine, but I, I will focus my remarks in the five few minutes that I have um, on Palestine, and particularly, Minister, the motion that was passed by this House um, just over a month ago that calling on the government to recognise the state of Palestine. Um, I'd like to thank you, Minister, for attending here with us today. Um, the Leader of the House, uh, Senator Cummins, gave a commitment when we passed that motion that you would come into the House to discuss the issue with us, um, so I welcome the fact that, that, that you are here. Um, and I'd also like to thank members on all sides of the House because we passed that motion without a vote. So I'd like to thank members on all sides of the House who supported it. And I think it is essential, Minister, that Ireland move now on this issue and recognise the state of Palestine without further delay. Um, and I hope that that's an issue that you would perhaps say more on when you, you come to your concluding remarks. Um, as you've noted, of course, recognising Palestine won't of itself bring peace to the region. However, it is a strong statement of support for the Palestinian people and their right to self-determination. And in the aftermath of Israel's latest assault on Gaza last summer, the Palestinian people need now more than ever to know that they have real support in the international community. It's also important that we do everything that we can to uh, bolster moderate Palestinian and Israeli forces and help them to work for peace. I'm a minister, as you noted yourself, the lack of progress that has been made in the endless peace talks. I am, and there have been talks in so many different guises now, I am, since Oslo, all of them without any resolution to the situation. But the, the lack of progress has led to a lack of faith amongst many I am, in the prospects of in, uh, political action as a way forward. And I think that's very, very dangerous um, for all concerned. And I think we're at a particular uh, flashpoint point now where if more action isn't taken, I think things are going to deteriorate an awful lot more. And we've seen that with the uh, recent spates of, of violence. Um, recently, Minister, as I'm sure you're aware, over 650 prominent Israelis wrote um, to members of the Dáil asking them to follow through. They welcomed the Shannon motion that we had passed here and they called for the Dáil um, to pass a similar motion recognising Palestine. And that letter was signed by former Israeli ministers and ambassadors, the former Speaker of the Knesset, a Nobel Prize laureate and retired army generals. And in their letter they expressed concerns about the continued political stalemate, the occupation and Israel's settlement activities. They stated that Israel's security and existence depend on the existence of a Palestinian state. And they said that Ireland recognising the state of Palestine would advance the prospects for peace. I mean, 135 countries already recognise the state of Palestine, including most recently Sweden. And last Friday, I shared a platform at the United Nations with uh, Swedish parliamentarians. And I have to, the uh, speech by the, the Swedish uh, Deputy Secretary for Foreign Affairs addressed the meeting and explained the rationale for behind her country moving to recognise Palestine. And it was uh, met with universal, almost universal acclaim, I suppose, apart from the Israeli ambassador, um, who was particularly aggressive um, and rude in, in his response to her remarks. But I thought she gave a very even-handed explanation of the reason why Sweden had acted. And, and it is driven by a desire to promote peace. And there was universal acceptance in the room that that was a positive thing and indeed um, some members in, in speaking, many members referred to the, the Senate motion that was passed here, uh, the Palestinian ambassador did, the chairman of the UN committee um, on Palestine did and, and, and others and called on us to move forward and take the same step and I, I really do hope minister that you will do so, that you will listen to members of this house and do that but while symbolic statements while significant um, are not enough and we must also do everything we can to help make Palestinian state a reality. Um, and I very much hope the Security Council will agree a resolution soon, setting a clear deadline for Israel's withdrawal from Palestine and other or talks. I am, if, if the Palestinians are lobbying hard to get support from that in the General Assembly and also in the Security Council. But such a resolution will only have a real impact if it is backed up by proper monitoring and strong enforcement measures. And we've seen how for decades at this stage, um, Israel has chosen to ignore Security Council resolutions and there have been absolutely no consequences. Um, when Iraq invaded Kuwait in 1990, the Security Council didn't just condemn um, the invasion, as indeed they have condemned several times over Israel's um, invasion of the West Bank. They also seconds. asked to put in place sanctions to help actually bring an end to it. And I, I think it's, it's ridiculous at this stage that Israel has been militarily occupying Palestine for 50 years without any consequences. And indeed, Minister, I welcome your own article yesterday where you said that 
Um, we've called time and time again, this is a quote from your article with the Finnish ambassador, we have time and time again called on the Israeli authorities to end the settlement policy, which clearly contradicts international law, but commitment is nothing without action. Um, continuation of this policy must bring a strong response from the international community, including the EU, if our commitment to upholding international laws be taken seriously. Minister, I really welcome that article. I thought it was an excellent article, um, and I call on, on you to deliver on that, to ensure that the EU does take real action. Um, at the very, very least, we should ban settlement goods. I mean, it's ridiculous that we would criticise the settlements, consistently point out that they're illegal and help to make them economically viable by buying from there. It's just complete hypocrisy. Um, but ultimately, I think as well that the EU-Israel Association Agreement should be suspended Senator. until Israel starts to abide by international law. And I think unless Ireland and other countries are prepared to actually stand up and take real action, things will only deteriorate. Um, so as I said, I do. I welcome your, your article from yesterday. You had asked for questions. Senator, I would ask I'd ask you to conclude now. Sorry, I'll conclude with two Senator, questions. You're one is, one time. is just Come when on. you will listen to the motion from this House and recognise Palestine. The second is you alluded in your article for the need for the EU to take action. You've repeated that two times now. I would ask you to outline to the House in your closing remarks what action you had in mind in the article. Thank you.